Thank you very much, guys. Congratulations, Liquid, uh, putting that win on the board for Albus Knox Luna in an absolutely crazy game over CLG. Tell me about your strategy with that pole comp and just trying to make them crazy and win the game. Well, the thing I want to start with is not about the game. I just want to apologize to Rocks Tigers and all fans who watched the game yesterday because I didn't shake hands. That was a bad behavior of, from me, and I'm really sorry, guys. Okay, and now about the game. Um, you know, guys, in Russia, Dota is kind of a popular game. I'm not sure that I'm allowed to, pronounce, <laughs> to say that, but in Russia, we don't care about slow game or if something is risky or not. In Russia, we just play the game because otherwise it's not interesting, nor for us, nor for viewers. So that we just try to do our best and to entertain you guys as much as possible. I am definitely entertained. I think everyone here is entertained and I think the strategy worked. And I love that you say that because the thing we know about you is that you love to play hard and fast with that brand, with that Bart, and now with an incredible Tom Kench. What is your philosophy on support and how it should be played? Well, my philosophy is pretty easy. You must do as much as possible. Mm, that's kind of all, but the thing is that when a guy has a nickname, Liquid Pix Tom for like a year, you may expect something, so we just went full nuts, and that's it. You absolutely did, and you were given a lot of tools to do it as well. Were you surprised that you got your hands on the Nidalee for you and the Tom Kench? Well, actually, we haven't played this um, setup for pretty long, but ha uh, our hands didn't forget the stuff, so we just went in, and even with us doing a lot of weird mistakes, the game was ours, we knew it. And in one moment, we just told each other, guys, if we don't get in caught now, we're winning game. And everyone was like, okay, and let's do this. You guys did it, fantastic uh, win and fantastic words. Finally, how do you think the group is gonna play out? Cause you put it completely on its head. Well, as soon as we are representing our region, we expect the best for us. But the thing is that this group is looking pretty interesting because CLG won G G2, we won CLG, you know what this means. And, <laughs> and uh, uh, I expect that we actually can have a shot of getting to quarterfinals, so good luck to us. Good luck to you guys, indeed. Fantastic victory, and I think I believe you as well. Congratulations, Liquid. Keep playing like that, because that's what we love to see. Analyst next to you guys as well. <laughs> Thank you very much, Shock. Keeping things interesting here. Game <laughs> one of day three, Albus Knox taking down CLG. But gentlemen, right off the top, I've got to mention, we have our first in Italy game, and it is a success. I mean, the draft in Gen was really interesting to me, guys. So the big story I took away was they got in that spot where they were like, at their last band, they're like, okay, we have to choose between Italy and Syndra. And Syndra's been the one dominating, so I thought, okay, let's see if they're going to ban one or leave them both up. They trusted in giving up the Syndra, then drafted a poke comp, one of the harder comps to execute. You fall behind on a poke comp, you lose your window, you lose the game. But they drafted a poke comp against Syndra, and we were talking about, okay, they draft Syndra, there's no good laning matchups, <laughs> what are you going to do? They took the Jace, the Jace could now build very naturally into uh -huh. the defensive more Malmordius, and from there, they execute an excellent poke comp, and Syndra, she's got a low health ball, she gets poked out. And the strategy worked. Yeah, I mean, you can build that Hex Drinker. I don't think it means that Jace is a good matchup into Syndra. No. It can definitely kill him uh, at level six before he gets there. The key is definitely, you know, how they played around it, sure. right? Uh, CLG, they had the right idea. You know, they got the Syndra early. They had this winning matchup. They even sent Smithy over there early. He went to the turret uh, level four, burned the cleanse even off camera before it even panned over there, then returned again. They try and pressure so hard Kira, and he outplays it saving his flash. Then they turn it around and they actually punish the low mobility of Syndra, which people have been talking about. You know, everyone's like, oh yeah, Syndra, top tier, you know, lane bully. However, two skirmishes back to back, who he goes down, they catch him out. Exactly, and it's outside of the lane that they're actually punishing this Syndra. So the lane advantage is there, but look at the way who he passed through this 
into two members of ANX that are able to keep themselves alive, who he goes down very quickly. And Kobe, this is one of the big things you were looking at. Exactly. They start the fight around mid lane where they know he just burned both summoners. And you saw in the previous one, Kira still had his flash, gets over the wall and surprises him. And then that one right there <laughs> in the river trying to get vision back. But let's talk about how Syndra was played in other games. You know, for example, Faker against Jensen. It was about jung strong ganking junglers pathing to his lane initiating after the first stun and picking up kills. Who he was around the map trying to make plays, not being played through in the mid lane. He wasn't the fulcrum. He was trying to be the one ganking other lanes. And I think that's what really hurt the strategy because who he actually fell pretty far behind. Well, I've got to push us forward now to some of the more exciting action that happened in the game. I'm sorry, I know you've got- No. Oh, okay. This All right, going, Okay, okay. All right, Wait. so 36 minutes into the game here, ANX interrupts CLG's bear and come away with a four for one. This is exactly what I was waiting for because CLG against poke team setup, they're going for the Baron without taking anybody down. And from their ANX, they get the initial block on the fight. Six A can't get himself in from the bottom side. It's good blocking overall. And this first phase goes so well to ANX, they continue following it up. Liquid again on this time, Kench impact in the team fights, getting the right members, and they can follow on and then eventually take CLG down. It's so funny to watch Lacrit on a war path on this Tom Kench. Beeline for the back line there. And Smurf had some very good trundle pillars uh, throughout this game to set up a lot of the kills. It didn't even end here. The fact that Liquid on what? Three, four hundred health stood around was actually the blocker for Stixay. Stopped him from coming in to steal away and try and get a snipe on the Baron. He knew his role. Started off Tanking three, then more, then even turned around for the AD carry. What a play. Huge fight for ANX, picking up the four kills plus the Baron. Now let's take a look at the fight that secured the win for Albus Knox Luna, brought to you by Acer. So we're late into the game. It's ANX continuing their aggression through this. And you can see the Bard ultimate does hit too, but CLG try and turn it around. Look at how far Darshan has pushed out of this fight and the health bars are so low. And this time in the fight, the skill shots are all landing for ANX. We saw a couple of messy fights from them, but continually going right into the fight from there with the Baron buff, they can look to close it out. Two proactive Baron power plays were the story. The first one against the Tide. The, le the, the vision had fallen down after CLG won their first fight. Took that Baron. The second one, that fight, icing on the cake. Right. Yeah, they caught out Nidalee. And Hui got kind of baited into the middle of that fight there. Walks right up on Syndra. And then he's in a bad spot. CLG have to retreat and they just get chased down. Player, going, uh, player of the game going to Likrit, the man on the stage there for that Tom Ken's play. I mean, we were looking at the Bard and the Brands coming into the tournament, now showcasing his ability to play this champion. You know, aside from maybe one or two ultimates that didn't necessarily hit, showing up quite some prowess there. I mean, he knew his role. That's the thing, is that he's known as a Brand player, he's known as a Zyra player, he's known to be more of a damage support, but knowing your role in a tankiness manner, occupying space is exactly what his team needed. A very brittle comp as a poke comp, but very well executed by Likrit. Yeah, and I have to say, the other thing we barely didn't touch on, though, was the vision in this game was chaotic. We were toggling <laughs> back and forth, and there were so many pockets of Fog of War. Some of them uh, for ANX resulted in Barons. The CLG <laughs> ones only resulted in a couple of kills. All right, well, excitement here in game one on the day, but we've got plenty more to come. Rock, Cyrus, and G2 Esports are getting ready to clash on stage, so don't go anywhere, because Worlds 2016 continues in just three and a half minutes. So, what oh, were you trying a, to tell me there? Right now. You wanted to yeah. enter that yourself? In the crowd. Oh, really? Yeah. Pog champ. Yeah, that's hella Pog champ. It's all up. Oh, Chaos gets gobbled up and that's the flash of Tom Kid. Who he gets spat on and Elvis Knox get first blood. It's two summoners down and he is going to be very vulnerable. Oh! Flip it, flip it, flip it, flip it. Let's stay on. Let's stay on. Let's stay on. Let's stay on. And for the second time at Worlds, a wildcard team has taken down another North American team.